Welcome to my lecture online. Now here is a definitely a challenging problem out of the JE advanced test. It deals with electricity magnetism, but more specifically with capacitor circuits. And it's not a simple circuit. It has two switches, one, two, three, four capacitors, two batteries, one, two, three, four resistors, and the switches are closed at different times. Wow. Well, let's read the problem and see what we're going to do with it. It says that in the circuit shown, initially, there's no charge on the capacitors and both switches, S1 and S2, are open. They give us the values of the capacitors, there's four of them, and then they ask us which of these four statements are correct. What I always would prefer that you do, I would recommend that you do that, is put in the capacitor values on the circuit because if they're like that on the side and then on the circuit, it's kind of difficult to deal with. So let's write them down. C1 is 10 microfarads. So this one is 10 microfarads. C2 is 30 microfarads. C4 and C3 are both 80 microfarads. So this one is 80 microfarads and this one here is 80 microfarads. It just makes it easier, less likely to make mistakes. All right, let's go ahead and read the four statements and determine which of those four, it could be one, could be all, could be none of the statements, which ones are correct. All right, at time t equals zero, we close switch one. So switch one closes, switch two stays open. And so now they're asking us for the instantaneous current in the closed circuit. And they ask us, will it be 25 milliamps? So the moment the switch closes, none of the capacitors have any charge on them. There's only one battery in the entire closed circuit. This circuit right here, this branch here, will have no current in it, even though it has a 10 volt battery, is because it's an open circuit, so no current will flow there at all, and this capacitor is not charged at all. When capacitors are not charged and the circuit closes and current begins to flow, those capacitors act like op not open, at closed circuits. In other words, it's like there's no capacitors there. So those three capacitors are not there the moment you close switch one. So essentially we have five volts that then goes around the circuit or five volts that's applied to the circuit. And we have one, two, three resistors in series. So for part A, we could say that the resistance total is equal to 70 plus 30 plus 100, which means 200 ohms. The voltage is equal to 5 volts, and so the current, which is equal to V over R, is equal to 5 volts divided by 200 ohms. And so 25 divided by 200, that would be 250 point amps. And so sure enough, 25 milliamps, so A is indeed correct. That's a correct statement. How about B? So now S1 is kept closed for a long time such that the capacitors are fully charged. So that's what they mean when we have S1 closed for a long time, long enough for all the capacitors to fully charge. Of course, once the capacitors are fully charged, they don't allow any current to flow. So no current is flowing through the circuit. Now they want us to know the voltage across C1 and is that equal to 4 volts? So here the question is, is the voltage across this circuit right here, is that 4 volts question mark for part B? All right, for that what we need to do is first figure out the total capacitance. Now we have how many capacitors in the circuit? We have C1, we have C3, we have C4. There's a total of three capacitors and they're all connected in series. So for part B, we know that 1 over C total equals 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3, which is equal to 1 over C1, which is 10 microfarads, plus 1 over C2, which is, oh, it's not C2, it's C3 and C4, so let's change the numbers, C3 and C4. So C3 is 80, so 1 over 80, and C4 is also 80, 1 over 80. So when we add that together, that would be a uh, common denominator is 80. That would be 80, 8 over 80, plus 1 over 80, plus 1 over 80, which is 10 over 80. So that means that C total is the inverse of that, which is 80 over 10, which is 8 microfarads. So that's the total capacitance in the circuit where S1 is being closed for a long time. All right, so now we know 
that uh, capacitance equals charge over voltage. Now, how much voltage is applied to the circuit? It's 5 volts that's applied. We know the capacitance, so we know that the total charge, Q total, is equal to C times V, which is, uh, let's say, 8, right, because it was uh, 8 microfarads, times 5 volts, which is equal to 40 microcoulombs of charge, because this was microfarads, right? So now we know the total charge, and remember that the charge in capacitor in series is the same on every capacitor, which means there is 40 microcoulombs of charge on C1. So now we can go again, we can say that V equals Q over C, that would be 40 microcoulombs of charge divided by 10 microfarads for the capacitor, this is C1, this is Q1, and so it would be 4 volts, and sure enough, that's what they say, will be 4 volts, so B is correct as well. You can see that this takes a little, little time, but you just have to work through it as we do this here. Now, part C. S1 is being kept for a, closed for a long time, so that all capacitors are charged. Now S2 is closed, so we close S2. At this time, the instantaneous current across a 30 ohm resistor between P and Q will be 0.2 amps, round to one decimal place. So, the moment switch 2 closes, so now we have switch 1 that's closed, now we have switch 2 that's closed, so this is now a closed circuit, and so we know that for part C, we know that I will be equal to V over R. Now the resistance on this branch is equal to 30 ohms. But what is the voltage across this branch? Well, notice that as soon as we close the switch, there's no charge in the capacitor, so no voltage across the capacitor. So it's simply the difference between this point and this point. What's the voltage between Q and P? And we can see that this is 10 volts, but what's the voltage over here? Hmm. Notice that we have 5 volts from here to here. So if we assume that Q is at 0 volts, and this is being close, the switch is being closed for a long time, so there's no current flowing in this, in the outside branch, the closed loop. We just have voltage drops across the capacitors, and notice since C3 and C4 both have 80 microfarad capacitors, then the voltage on uh, C3, which is equal to the voltage on C4, the voltage across those capacitors, is the charge over the capacitance. So it would be the charge of 40 microcoulombs divided by 80 microfarads, which is a half a volt. So both of these capacitors have a half a volt across them. So we have 5 volts here, we lose a half a volt, so P is at 4.5 volts, and Q is at 0 volts, and then we have a 10 volt increase, so we go from 0 to 10 volts, and now from 10 volts to 4.5 volts. So the voltage drop across this resistor is 10 minus 4.5, so that's 10 minus 4.5, let me make this a little bigger, so it's equal to 5.5 divided by 30 ohms, and that's roughly, if this was 6, it would be 0.2, 5.5 is about 0.2, remember they told us round to the one decimal place, so that's approximately equal to 0.2 amps, and so it looks like C is correct as well. So, so far, A, B, and C are all correct. How about D? If S1 is kept closed for a long time, so again, we start over again. If S1 is closed for a long time, the voltage difference between P and Q will be 10 volts. Now, that can be the case because only the 5 volt battery has any significance in the outside loop, and the 10 volt has nothing there's no, 10 volt cannot be applied because switch S2 is still open for D. So the 10 volt has no application to the circuit. This is not, like a, this is not even there because the switch is open, so this doesn't even exist. And there's only a 5 volt driving the current around the circuit. So the maximum difference between P and Q is 5 volts. 10 volts cannot be possible. So we say no, D is not a possibility. And therefore, the answers to this circuit are A, B, and C, and D is not correct. And that is how it's done. You can't do this in three minutes. <laughs> but you saved all that time on the previous problems, so therefore, 
<laughs> you can go for a little. <laughs> yeah, this one will take you a while. All right.